Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another batch of new comic book reviews. Gee, whatever could they be? Yes, I included all four in the uh, in the thumbnail this time around. And I do like to have at least one DC Marvel and an independent, and I'll throw in an extra here or there, basically to make sure it goes over the 10-minute mark. To tell you the truth, that's what it's all about. Anyway, with all that said, let's uh, kick back, relax, and get this party started. And we are going to begin with Deceased Unkillables, number three. I was not able to get the uh, the cover B this time around. I'm a little disappointed because this is still a decent cover, though. I actually hear that cover B is worse. But enough of the covers. Let's talk about what's inside. You know what I heard? Some people are, are bashing on the art for this book. I don't get that. I enjoy it. I think it works for the storyline. Um... I kind of get if you take it out of context, which they did, that it could be a little rough. Uh, you got zombie Wonder Woman in here, and they were like, oh, look, they draw her to look like a man. No, they're drawing her to look like a zombie. Come on now. Get with it, kids. But yeah, I actually think the art works for the story that we're being told. Um, not the best in the world, I'll, I'll admit to that, but it's, it's still decent. Like I said, sometimes it, it doesn't matter... Uh, if if it's like Jim Lee style art or whatever, and it's impeccably cool and all that kind of thing, so long as it works for the story, the story and the the art have to uh, have to match, and I do believe it does here. Alrighty, how about that story? This is the big run. Okay, they realize that they can't stay where they are anymore. It's definitely been compromised, so uh, they take off. All the kids are in a school bus. They're trying to get them across town to safety. And uh, into the green where Poison Ivy is and everything. And um, they, they make their run. And, of course, one by one, heroes fall. What I'm not really sure of is that weren't these the survivors because they had healing factors? You know, we got Creeper falling and we got uh, Solomon Grundy. You know, Solomon Grundy killed on, on, on uh, what was it, Saturday or whatever, died on Saturday or something. Anyway, point being is, shouldn't he, uh, shouldn't he be again born on Monday? That's the whole point to these guys. They have these incredible healing factors. Now, with Deathstroke, he was liquefied, so there's no coming back from that. Otherwise, I got to tell you, this was a very intense story. It re it works. I'm a big fan of the deceased storyline. Bring me more. I uh, I'm there. I love this. It's just a three issue miniseries. But each of the three issues were intense, and uh, gosh, I love the way it ended. Great ending, guys. You stuck it. Year Zero. As, uh, granted, I do talk about covers sometimes before we go in. I love this cover. It, it just looks gorgeous. Great and beautiful countryside with a, uh, <laughs> a freaking RV with blood all over it. It just looks awesome. So it starts off, it really kind of reminds me of the book, um, Zombie Nation, or what? not Zombie Nation, you know the ones, uh, World War Z. That's it. And it's just basically talking about how all of this uh, has begun. You're following four different stories. I do dig on, um, on this little uh, separation right here because this is the way it is. The thing is... It doesn't come together very well until a certain point. And I think that's a weakness of the book. I was like, okay, yeah, I see what you're doing, trying to blend one story into the next and everything. But it's still a jarring transition every time you do it. For a while, that was how it was. It's like, okay, you, you're not giving us enough time to meet and know a lot of these characters. Instead... There's a lot of pontification. There's a lot of, uh, isn't this the world should be? It's like the writer, instead of trying to create this world for us, has decided that instead he's going to preach to us. And unfortunately, like I said, that makes the beginning of this book pretty weak. But then it just clicks. At a certain point, it's like, okay, the writer decides to stop telling us how to live our lives and start showing us what's going on or at least uh, have some sort of action interaction and reaction to the world that he's trying to build so about halfway through the book is when it really kicks off and that that's kind of upsetting because i would love to flat out tell you that this is a wonderful book because once it did get going i'm all in i'm telling you that it, it really dug in I, this is good enough for me to want to see the second issue 
but bad enough that I can't recommend you do it. <laughs> you know, check this book out if you want. Not on my recommendation, just because once again, it's uh, it's a half and half, and I can't do that. You know, I mean, uh, if I, if it was the way it was in the middle on from the get, I would be saying absolutely one hundred percent. At this point, it's more like sixty forty. Ant-Man number four. All righty, guys. So I've been a big fan of the Ant-Man miniseries that's been going on right now. I think it's a fun series. It's funny. Uh, I do think they're steering a little bit hard into the Scott Lang being a lovable loser um, to the point where he's passing lovable. Aside. He's just pushing that aside and he's just being a loser and uh, that's making the dot. Obviously, okay, yeah, they they want to make sure that both heroes look good, but you got to make sure that both heroes look good. Why is Scott Lang even wearing the costume? If you know, I mean, this isn't Inferior Five guys. You have to <laughs> Inferior Five guys. That's a bad burger joint. But you know, you got to show us why Scott Lang is a hero in the first place. Not that is uh, he's a sidekick to his daughter. Now, the first three issues did not have this problem. Yeah, it was a comedy, and there were some bumblings, there were some mistakes, but it didn't disrespect the hero. That happens a little bit in here. It's still a fun story, and all of the stuff surrounding what I just talked about was enjoyable. It was entertaining, and based on the strength of the three issues before it, I would say, of course, get it. Here come the cops. Um, there you go. All righty, keep going. Keep going. And thank you. All righty. So, you know, based on the strength of the three, I would still say pick this up to continue the story. It leaves off on a great cliffhanger. It, it is still a fun book. I just wish uh, I just wish when you have a character who's bumbling, don't make him an idiot. Somewhere along the lines, they kind of steered into that just a little bit too much. I hope by the, the fifth issue, and I think that's going to be the last. I think it's a five issue miniseries. Um, I hope next issue we see him competent again. I, I want to see that. It was strong in, in the first three issues. I still recommend the series uh, based on the strength of the first three issues. This one, however, obviously I'm not going to tell anybody you should start at issue number four of a five or even six issue miniseries. I enjoyed it. I think it's a good time. Once again, just with the flaws that I stated before. And then we have youth. Now, look at this. You got a car. What is is that blood coming out of the door? You've got the two boyfriends holding hands. All right, and go. Um, I, I said that I had a fourth review here to make it to 10 minutes. And to tell you the truth, I, I could do this whole review in three words. This book sucks. This is a horrible book. Um, now that there's the review, maybe I'll tell you why, and that'll actually take us to, to the 10 minute mark and all that. Um, in all honesty, it's because there's nobody in here that's uh, even close to a decent person right away. We, uh, we get two guys, they're boyfriends, uh, they're ones at work, ones at home, both are douchebags. One guy even, no, both of them actually commit assault one because the father is insisting that the guy go out and get a job. And he's like, no, I'm playing video games, bastard, and punches him. The other one, the, the black guy who works at the fast food joint, the dude that he hit, he was coming off like a douche. So that one is a little bit more forgivable, but still, neither one is endearing. And all throughout, there, it's written that these guys are something special, but we're just shown that they're idiots. We should go out on the run. Why don't we steal my father-in-law's car? Oh my gosh, we, we got to go, but the, the tire's flat. I don't know how to fix a tire. Maybe we... Oh wait, I think one guy even says, Yeah, I know my way around cars. Let me fix that tire for you. That's like what your parents teach you right before you even get in the car. This is horrible characters. It's a horrible story. It's a horrible comic. It's just no, it's no damn good. I mean, it went, like I said before, and I'm just going to reiterate, this book sucks. And as always, I have the covers here lined up from uh, best to worst. 
not that any of them are worst except for the very last one, but I did like Deceased a lot better. I think it really did stick the landing to the entire series, uh, the, the three-issue series anyway. And Ant-Man still retained that element in fu- of fun and uh, humor. It has some great adventure in, in it as well. So obviously uh, that owes itself to the second and unfortunately, uh, as good as Year Zero should have been, it gave up um, preaching. It gave up world building for preaching. So that's why it's in the third place. And I mean, come on. Like I said, for fourth, youth sucks. I mean, not youth as in, hey, I'm growing up youth, but this comic, not good at all. Not at all very good. That's just a little summary, Yang. Well, there you go, guys. That's my opinion. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to click on one of the videos that are popping up right around here. Making sure you uh, ring that notification bell and hit that subscriber notice if you haven't done it already. If you like the channel enough, please consider going to Patreon or Ko-Fi, dropping dollar in the till. There's even a members only over at I Love Comics. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.